This meeting is now being recorded. Great. So, now that we're recording the meeting, uh, just to recap, uh, everyone needs a pastor.com profile set it up set up with a login ID and password. You can ask your fine arts director or your uh, athletic director or school admin to set you up with that Tapster um, access. We use Tapster for all our data entry with the entries and all the artwork you'll submit. We get our labels, our key forms, so everything is done through there. So please make sure that your personal profile has an updated email address as well as a phone number that we can contact you after school hours. Okay, the uh, main sources of our communication and uh, letting you know where things are is the TAPS.biz website. Just click on Fine Art and then Art. And there are many links there that have uh, documentation information, um, important dates and deadlines, mm -hmm. as well as the, the rules. So we're going to start with just going over Tapster a little bit. In Tapster, we have um, the testing that all coaches are required to do. So when you log into Tapster, your profile is updated. You'll click on testing. And on the testing link, you'll have a test for the art rules as well as a professional acknowledgement of rules um, that you'll need to take. All art teachers that are uh, sponsoring the students at the meet will need to take this uh, testing, this scope testing. Um, and that has to be done prior to entering any entries into TAPSTER. After you finish your uh, TAPSTER testing, you will need to make sure your students have been entered onto the art eligibility form. Uh, some of you may not have access through your school to edit your student profile, so your fine arts director or your head admin will need to do that for you. Um, basically, each student profile will need to have art chosen as the uh, participating activity, as well as you need to make sure that each student has a professional acknowledge I'm sorry, not a professional, a student acknowledgement of roles on file. And both of those are located on the student profile. After the student profiles are up to date, you will need to have your eligibility form submitted. The eligibility form is found on the forms and reports link. Um, the forms and reports link is not uh, will not generate the eligibility form until we have those student profiles updated. Um, and then after you have your eligibility form submitted, you'll be able to proceed with the entries link. Uh, on the entries link, you will need to uh, select a category and then choose the students. And each different entry requires different information. Uh, some of it just requires a title in media, and then other parts of it require a photo or a document or like short film uh, link to be uploaded. So each of the entries is different. Uh, you just need to make sure that all of those entries are put in there by the deadline. Um, after submitting your entries, uh, I think the biggest question we have is um, we put our entries in there, but it says we're not registered for the meet. And, um, it will say no up until the deadline. And so until the deadline, you can go in and edit your entries as many times as you want. Uh, but once the deadline passes, you will not be able to uh, edit those entries any longer. So just make sure that you have those entries in uh, by the deadline. And up until that deadline, the overview will say that you are not registered for the state meet and it will switch to yes after that entry deadline has passed. Uh, once the entry deadline has passed, you will also be able to access the meet in Tapster, and that will give you um, your inventory list and your fee forms and things like that. So that's just a basic overview of Tapster. If you ever have questions regarding Tapster or need help getting access, you can always click the contact link on the Tapster .biz website and just see Tapster as the heading and we will make sure that you get the assistance you need. Okay, uh, Holly is going to go over some of the rules um, with you. If you want, you can follow along on the Tapster.biz website, click 
Governance, click Fine Art, and then choose the art sections. There are three art sections, mm -hmm. 230, uh, 231, and I'm sorry, 229, 230, and 231. Uh, the general information, category descriptions, um, and then the state competition information. So Holly is going to talk to you about those. If at any time during this webinar you have a question, up at the top of your screen there is a Q&A page uh, button. You just click the Q&A button and you can type in your questions. We will be reading those questions throughout the webinar and answering those. Um, we will also be showing you some of the documentation that we'll go over and where to find the documentation on the website. All right, um, I'm going to start with Section 229. This is replacing our winter meeting. So at the meeting, we would have discussed any changes we wanted to make before state came up. So basically, we all sat this morning and kind of made sure everything was cohesive and made sense to us. So hopefully, it's going to make sense to all of you. Um, 229, the very beginning just talks about the different sections and what they're you uh, what you'll find in there. 229 is general information about competing. It's meant as an overview. It's helpful at the very beginning to read over everything in 229. Um, 230 is category descriptions. It gets a lot more detailed about the individual categories. And then 231 is a state information. So nothing has changed on the top part of A. Uh, we kept 25 works of art this year. One of the main reasons was because um, uh, 6A has been created, and we don't know how that's going to affect the size of the pieces coming. So we're going to leave it at 25 works of art, but we will definitely look at the number of pieces next year after 6A has come in and we make sure we've got space for everybody. Same, our history is the same, you know, portfolio is the same, we haven't changed anything. Um, remember to take your scope test. If you cannot get in to put your entries in, that's usually what the problem is. I think Dana just talked about that, so I'm not going to go back into it. Um, I do want to talk about state dates, but let's wait till we get to 231. Um, senior portfolio, we'll, I'll talk about those dates as well. It's the same digital submission we've had. Guidelines for 2D work, I don't think we've changed anything there. Okay, so let's talk about source material down on E. It says all work um, needs to be entirely conceptualized, developed, and created by the student. That's not changed. Again, for the purpose of our competition, a reproduction of another artist's work or images off the Internet, a non-public domain is prohibited. Copying a published photograph, painting, or drawing is illegal, and it's always been in our uh, rules and guidelines as well. So remember, your students are encouraged to use personal photographs in place of other people's work. However, if the cho student chooses to use public domain images, um, we've given you a list of things, uh, places you can go to look at public domain images and pull them. Um, we have an example of what a public domain image um, page would look like. Do you have it? I think. I did. Okay. Anyway, um, what you're going to need to do is on the piece of paper you're bringing to state, it has to say that the image is a public domain image. If you send me the, if you just bring it with the website at the bottom, there's no way for us to pick up the website and read it for ourselves. So you're going to need to make sure that the page says public domain, it's okay to use that image. If you have any questions on it, send me an email and I will send you a document that shows exactly what it needs to look like. Because we don't want that to be a confusion. Yeah. So I gave you two different examples. One's from public domain pictures. And in there it says it's a public domain image. And then if you scroll down below, it's another site. It's got the image. And also it says if you scroll just a little bit further down, um, keep going, it says this is public domain as well. So we need to actually see the words, this is an okay public domain, 
free for commercial use, free for public use. Um, the URL is not um, sufficient because we don't know where that came from. And we have that come up quite a bit. So if you can help us out with that, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, student taking an image. Um, we redid the image information form, hopefully to make it easier for you to use. It just basically follows some logical steps if you're not from observation, if it's a student taken, if it's a non-student taken, and if it's a public domain image. We've kind of addressed it all. Hang on, we're going to go through that. Jean is going to pull up the form. We updated it. It should be on the site in the next couple of days. Oh, the new one. All right, that's okay. While she's looking for it, we'll just keep going. Um, just remember, public domain and the students taking pictures should be sufficient for whatever art you guys are creating. Um, students should be encouraged to use personal photographs in place of other people's work, such as magazines, books, and the internet. Um, then when students choose to use someone else's work in non-public domain as the basis of their work, they must provide written permission from the copyright holder and a copy of the original image. Last year, we had a couple of National Geographic images that students were actually able to get permission from the original photographer to use the images. So in that instance, um, it is not a public domain. You had permission, so you're encouraged to change it three ways significantly. Uh, and it's the same three ways we've always had on the website. Uh, color or lack thereof, you can change the media or the medium, and you can add or delete things. So that has not changed. We just reworded it, hoping to make it a little clearer for everybody. Um, on the website, under Fine Arts and Art, if you scroll down the page just a little bit, you can't see it when you first get on the site. You're going to see um, some uh, forms. Hang on. I wanted to get there so I could show it to you. <coughs> So down at the bottom, when you scroll beyond the uh, beyond all of us, the art bylaws um, are all the information I'm reading to you today. And then if you click on championship information and forms, you'll see that there's going to be the state schedule. It should be up in the next couple of weeks. A school notebook instructions, art history, um, dates and deadlines. Dates and deadlines are probably going to go away. I think. What we're trying to do is put them all on the TAPS calendar with everything else that's going on in TAPS. So all you have to do is look at the month of March. You can see your academic deadlines, your art deadlines, your music deadlines, and it's all in one place. So I think that that is not going to exist anymore, which uh, is fine. Will. It, or we'll repeat it. Uh, short film instructions, short film talent releases, and all the paperwork here. If you don't see something you're looking for, let me know. And either we can put it on and create it, or I can tell you maybe where it is, although I, I think this is pretty exhaustive of everything we need. Um, document case. So follow, uh, I'll update the notebook. Just make sure that it's okay. I haven't looked at it today, but once I do, I'll, I'll get that updated. Um, same with eligibility, just in general. 229 is an overview. So once you've got through that, you have a really good idea of what TAPS will allow and what they won't allow, what you can do with your pieces. But what you're really missing is the categories, the sizes, the kind of the meat of everything. That's where 230 comes in. So 230 goes through every single category that we have 
and tells you what size the pieces can be, um, including the mats and the mounts. It tells you what media or medium you can use. And it's a pretty um, simple thing to follow. Uh, it starts with drawing black and white, and it just explains exactly how you're going to do it. Rendered in a single or mixed black and white media that has to be dry. Then drawing color is also dry. Communication design is basically arranging printed words in various forms. So everything has a printed word in each of those categories. So the first one is arranging printed words. The second is arranging associated text. And the third is combining words. So as long as you've got words in communication three, you're good. Computer rendered art. We have some issues with the screenshots. You'll be disqualified if you don't have screenshots. We need to know where your student started and where your student ended on computer rendered art. There have to be three of them. And you want to make sure you start at the very beginning and take a screenshot and include that in your notebook um, as well as if you want to attach it to the back of the work. Uh, I think both places are going to be useful for the judges to show the work in progress and then the work finalized. Uh, painting, you've got a size there. We suggested some medium, but that is not all that you can use. Printmaking, 2D mixed media is next. Goes basically through the suggested works that you could do. Photography, black and white. And photography, color, exactly the same, except that one is black and white and one is color. Unaltered and altered are in the same category. It says a maximum size and a minimum size. Um, sculpture relief, same as it usually is. It just explains what you can put in this category and what you can't. Ten, fashion design, textile arts, applied industrial design, and jewelry design. So basically, you're looking for functional work, um, realized objects, weavings, handmade papers, this is a good category to put, um, um, help me out, fusible glass. Um, yeah, slump bowls. Ten is a good place to put those. I've seen them in nine, uh, so it's up to you guys, but those are usually places where we tell people to put things like that. Um, we changed our player at the bottom of ten only if. 3D architectural work of art entered as a de uh, applied design work must have a legend typed in place in the lower right-hand corner. There was a confusion in the way it was worded, so we reworded it to be less confusing. Pottery, ceramics, and plastic art, the same. Senior portfolio, same. Um, On-site drawing, same. Art history, last year of the Images is a two-year cycle. The first one was last year, the second, and we end this year. Seek and sketch is the same color. These are all state events. Short film competition uh, goes into content. And I'll tell you with the short film, as you continue to ask us questions, then we continue to modify and um, make clear the rules and content. Uh, so as you come up with these great ideas and we implement them, this short film competition um, rules get a little clearer. Um, so there are a few ads here. We're just trying to make it a little clearer for you guys to understand. But one of the questions we've had is how many people can be talent? And there is not a limit to that. Um, it's only the three students that wrote it, directed it, um, produced it, but one of them does say it can be the lead talent. So that's a question we get a lot. So hopefully we wanted to clear that up. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here. No. Yes. Um, Amy brought up a good question. I've had a couple of those, too. Uh, schools want to use film that they did last spring or the year before. And um, the rules state currently that have to be within this school year. We can relook at it in the summer and change that. I don't have a problem with that. It's just that right now the rules are set for this year. So it has to be something that you did starting in August when school started uh, until the end of 
of this uh, competition season. Uh, if we want to relook at that, that's fine. We're just going to keep to it now with that. And if you have any more questions on short film, don't hesitate to ask, because it only makes us better with all the questions you guys have as you work through the category. Yeah, so the artwork information form Vina just pulled up. Oh, sorry, they can't see it yet. So, uh, I don't know why we never had the student name or the title of the work. It just seems to make sense. So we added that. And then um, it's just a little bit easier to understand what to do. So one, it says, all work is from observation or imagination. And if you say yes, it was a still life or you just dreamed about it and, and drew it, then it did use a model. If you didn't, um, then you're done with this and you sign at the bottom. If you did, you're going to continue down the page, fill out the model release, uh, and then sign it. If you took the photograph and the photo has recognizable images of people, you're going to have to have a model release. If you took the photograph and it doesn't have people, you're going to mark you took the photo, you're going to include the photo in the notebook, you're going to sign the bottom, and you're done. If it's a non-student taken photo, say your teacher gave you permission to use one of their photographs, um, then you're going to say yes. Um, if Student taken photo. If it's not a student taken photo, right? If it's a no, if it's non student taken photo, um, but it has recognizable images, you're still going to have to have a model release. But um, did you get permission to use the photo? Yes or no? So if your teacher gives it to you, just make sure you say yes, you have permission to use it. If you um, need to go beyond your teacher and you got it from a photographer, you're going to need to have them sign this and date it, sign it, uh, and you sign it to give permission to use the photograph. Um, and then the contact information, student use. And then if you use the public domain image, uh, include a copy of it with this paperwork, and then you're going to say yes. Uh, the notebook. My thing missing. If it was public domain. Yes, it was public domain, or no, it wasn't. Public no. Domain. Okay. And then student use the model, yes or no, in that public domain, and then the model release is down below, and we haven't changed that. And then at the very bottom, you're going to sign it along with your teacher, just recognizing that you've got your model releases and that we know exactly where the artwork started with. What did it start with, a photograph or imagination? Um, then two, yes, it's not all 25. Not no, that's true. Because it was observation via photo. So your work either runs into observation or some kind of ducting. Models in the same work and they find the same thing? Did they have to do multiple models? They would have to do multiple one because you're. Form. Three art. Right. One form for every model. If there's three models in there, you'd have to have permission from all three. Yeah. So then they'll just have to print it three times okay. and have each one fill out their contact information. Um, then on 231, it goes into details of the state competition. Um, and this year it's April 3rd and 4th. And I'll go through the deadlines for when things are due. Um, remember, we've got 6A joining us this year for the first time. And um, that is going to uh, just change uh, the way we set up the, the uh, venue. So we're just going to have to take a look at that once we get down to um, Waco. Uh, the, the, the capture information. Okay, so um, where you're going to find your delete or your uh, due dates is in the TAPS calendar. So currently, if you have a senior portfolio or a sh um, uh, a short film and they're ready, you can put them in. If they're not, these are your due dates. February 15th is the last day to turn in a short film. And then for senior portfolios, February 22nd is the last day you can turn in a senior portfolio. You can take it up to midnight on both those dates.
the week of the 13th of March, you will be notified if your senior portfolio is moving on to state. And then March 22nd is the deadline for state art to have all your entries in. The 29th of March is the last day for substitution for state-only events, which would be on-site drawing and senior portfolio uh, deadline is February 22nd. Then the week of the 13th of March, you will be notified at the beginning of that week, if I get all of them uh, out there to get judged, for notification of senior portfolios. That'll give you a, about a week before the deadline for all entries. Should give you enough time to put in what you need to if your student didn't make it uh, to state with their senior portfolio. Substitutions for on-site drawing and seek and sketch. You can do it all the way up to the 29th. Mm -hmm. uh, of March. March 22nd is the deadline for state art. All entries must be in by midnight that day. Every 20th is gone. So March 20th is the deadline. Yeah, I pulled it to the 22nd, middle of the week. That way they have the first couple of days of that week rather than having to come right back from the weekend. So remember, you can turn this in your portfolio in now as well as your films. Um, TAPSTER is ready to receive, happy to do it. But the last day uh, for short films is the 15th of February, and the last day for senior portfolios is um, February 22nd. All right, so let's go through the state competition information. Um, every school needs to bring a notebook to state. The notebook has specific things needs to include. And within CAS, within Section 231, it actually breaks down exactly what you need to have in there. In addition, there's a PowerPoint on TAPS.biz that shows you a notebook being put together. There's also a PowerPoint on TAPS that shows you how to put your senior portfolio together. If you have any questions on those or concerns, don't hesitate to contact us before the deadline, and um, we have a lot more time to help you with what you need help with. So it's a just get a five tab, and then it just breaks it down into what you need in the first tab, which is uh, the paperwork for the artwork coming to the competition, so the 25 works. The paperwork would include the information form, um, staple all necessary photos, and information to each form is necessary. Two is contact information for you who, oh, and whoever brought the art, and that's important because if we need to get a hold of you and we want to do that to make sure we get all pieces in and nothing disqualified, we need to have a good phone number for you, something you'll answer. Um, three, inventory forms for artwork coming to the competition. For a fee form and your school check, we're giving you about a week and a half to get a school check cut. Fifth is inventory form for categories 13 to 17. Uh, schools that will have all verified at registration. And then you'll put your labels on with you while you're registering. Um, the lines were pretty long last year for some of our bigger divisions. So. Um, we're going to try something different. I think we're going to do A through H, and then we're going to have um, the next group. I don't know my alphabet, H, uh, I, I through Z, <laughs> come. Uh, because it, it was all 2A or it was all 3A, and I think if we divide you guys out, even give you about 15 minutes in between, I think you'll wait a little bit less time. And as I recall, it was pretty toasty out there waiting to turn in art. So we don't want you waiting in the sun. So um, the only thing we would ask is if we give you a particular time, please come at that time. If you come early, it doesn't help because you're going to end up waiting in line. Um, I'd rather have you come a little late than I would have you come early. So if we say come at, you know, 8.30, come at 8.30, come at 8.35, don't come at 8.15 because the other groups are still trying to get in. But we are going to try to um, 
uh, have more people to check you in. There's, I'm, I'm, my goal is um, 12 this year, and it, with that, it should go really, really fast. We'll help you put your labels on, and you'll get to put your art out. Um, let's see. The rest of this goes through judging and criteria. We haven't changed any of that. We should have the same judges we've had in the past, Baylor, Mary Harden, um, uh, Fidham, SCAD, Vase. Uh, usually we have about 14 to 16 judges. Take a look at the work. Um, state fees. I don't think anything's changed. Uh, categories and awards are the same. Just make sure you don't forget your art. Um, uh, somebody around here has a collection of forgotten art in their house. <laughs> So if you're missing a piece you really wanted and you thought it was gone, it might not be. So contact one of us and we'll see if we can find it for you. <laughs> um, I don't have anything else. Laura or Amy? I just wanted to remind them that uh, there will be no substitutions in on-site events after the meet. The substitutions have to have occurred by the deadline. No. No. On-site drawing is being done locally in Waco by a group Arts of Alliance. Arts, Arts, Alliance. Arts Alliance, and that's real exciting. Our usual um, on-site um, uh, guru is not available this year, so we will miss her, but um, we're excited with our new group that's coming in. We will not be on the stage as near as I can tell. Uh, we'll be in a room, so it might accommodate a few more people, too, and we'll have to see. Okay. And then you want to talk about the, it's still different this year as far as this academics is only going to overlap one day. Okay, so for the scheduling of the art meet, art will start on Monday. The 3rd, yes. Uh, April 3rd, art will uh, happen on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, LD debate will be going on at the same time, and so they will be using almost all the room, rest of the rooms in the convention center. Uh, however, the bulk of Academic events are not going to start until Tuesday, and they carry over from Tuesday to Wednesday. And so there will be a lot more room for the art folks to um, have space. Um, we are also going to work into the schedule of viewing time for the students to view the artwork um, at some point in the schedule. Um, we'll work out the logistics of that time once I know exactly how much space uh, and uh, rooms that I have over the over the two days, but um, those are the major changes for the scheduling. Is that art will be a day before academics, um, and then the second day will be the first day of academics. So art is on Monday and Tuesday. Academics is on uh, debate starting on Monday, and then academic and speech testing and speech events will be Tuesday and Wednesday. So we actually hope to get you all out of there Tuesday pretty early in the afternoon. Um, you won't be going until like 7 or 8 that second day, but pretty pretty good afternoon time. We, we don't know yet. Jessica? Um, I still have photos that I can get a link to people if they would like to see the things that placed in the divisions. Um, I can get that link to them if they want it. Okay. Just in divisions that I could capture at the time that I had. Okay, so we do have documentation uh, archives of the um, entries that placed last year. If you're wanting, uh, we might be able to get that put on the website so that you can access that pretty easily um, or through email. Okay, um, at the top of your screen, there is a Q&A box. Um, if you have a question you would like to ask, I just click on that Q&A box and then uh, submit your question. So we're going to just go ahead and start uh, reading off the, any questions that are submitted and just answer those. And then, um, of course, if you have questions throughout the semester, you can use the taps.biz contact link page, um, or um, you can email Holly directly or Lori, yep, or Amy Reese. Okay, so uh, we will have those. Um, addresses for you in just a second. I'll type them out, but uh, let's go ahead and start taking questions. Um, the first one 
Uh, some of these questions may have been answered in the webinar, but we wanted to go ahead and uh, try to answer them uh, out loud. Um, someone asked, if you're logged into the webinar, will that exempt us from the test? like in the past when we attended the week, uh, meeting in Waco? And that answer is uh, yes. Um, even though you are exempt from the testing, I highly recommend you still go to the test and click through it and just read through the questions. Uh, just to remind yourself of the types of things that are on the test, um, you still are responsible for that information. So even though you are exempt, we did not go over line by line of the manual, and that is uh, the purpose of that testing. So although we will send you a certificate for the credit hour that you attended this meeting, um, I still highly recommend that you go to the TAPSTER test and at least look through it. Uh, the next question says, how many students can be involved in an animation submission? And this question actually, um, is a response to all three categories of the short film, mm -hmm. um, animation, uh, documentary, and documentary, documentary <laughs> and narrative. narrative. Okay, so all three, um, you can have one to three students um, to produce, direct to direct it, it write film it, it, film it. Um, there can only be three students actually involved in uh, creating and producing the film. However, that does not include the on-site uh, talent, the on-screen talent. So, um, so a question could be, if they are also helping produce, could they also be the on-screen talent? That answer is yes. We are not monitoring who the on-screen talent is. However, you do need to make sure you look over the short film, um, mo um, what is it called? Oh, the um, intent to participate. The intent to participate. So e any student that um, participate in the form in, in the film will need to make sure that they have signed that intent to participate in the film. Okay, so um, next question. Uh, when will glass get its own category? Stained glass, film form, lamp work, etc. Um, Holly? <laughs> um, at this time, TAPS is not um, considering adding categories. So, uh, I think we've got two main categories it could go into, uh, and at this point, I think that's where we're going to leave it. We can also always revisit during the summer, uh, moving some categories around. If we got rid of something, possibly could add something, but that seems like a very um, specific type of category, and right now we're looking to, to more homogenize the categories that we already have. Um, as far as any category goes, Generally speaking, um, if there's a high volume of something that's competing that uh, in history of that, that would be grounds for the board considering such additions. So, um, so definitely the the I guess if there's an overabundance of a certain category, then I think that's when they, we would kind of consider opening up new categories. Any other questions? Okay, someone asked about the viewing time. Um, we actually don't know exactly when that's going to be because I haven't worked out the schedule, but we will try to, um, we are working to schedule a viewing time into the schedule so that the students and directors can all come in and see the work that's presented. Um, I believe that the viewing time is very educational, and although most of you want to just get your stuff and go, um, we are trying to allow the students to have the opportunity to see what other work is there. So we will try to do a viewing this year. Any more questions? Okay, so I believe we covered the main points of the manual and then also the website. I'm going to um, just share the screen one more time so that you can see what, um, what we have on the website. We want to make sure that we are um, checking that 
updates and things. Generally, we send emails based on the email address that's in Tapster. So once again, make sure your Tapster profile is updated with your um, with a login ID and password, and it's got the correct um, it's got the correct email address and out of school day phone number. Okay, so um, on our Tax.biz website, we've got our fine arts page, and you just click on art. And then we have our manual there, as well as um, the championship information and forms. And here's a list of all those forms. We will double check those this afternoon just to make sure all of them are up to date. Um, and then the uh, art history test that happens to still be listed there, that is actually last year's art history exam. We'll leave that up for a little while just so that you can, your students, if they want, they can go in and uh, look through it. You can look, see the types of questions. That is not the current test. Uh, the current test date were, um, let's see, I think it's, I think it's March 1st through 15th. So March 1st through 15th, if you look at the important dates and deadlines, We've got uh, March 1st through 15th is the art history exam. Um, and so the one that is currently posted is not valid. It's last year's test. You can use it to study. And then um, so we've got the, the art page with the championship information. And then this webinar is being recorded. You can go back and listen to it, watch it again. Um, but we will have a link to that. And then uh, the governance link also has our rules. The calendar here is uh, where we'll have all the dates posted. And then if you have questions, uh, you can click the contact link here, and it will open up a uh, help desk. And just type in your name, and down at the bottom, just choose Fine Arts. And that will go directly to me. And if it's um, specific to art, where I need the experts, I will let Holly know. And uh, she'll get back to you. So thank you for viewing in. I'm going to give one more moment in case you have other questions before we log off. Um, so now's the time. Um, the only other thing is news briefs are going to be, as we get closer to state and we've got things we need to tell you, will be in here, correct? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, we will have a news post. Um, if you check on the music website, uh, the music page, it has a news post link. Um, so any any emails that we send out uh, to the MAF, we will also post on the website so that you can have an archived copy of that. Now, it looks like we'll have some workshops in different states, so be thinking about um, that as well. We should post those this month, so we give you lots of time. I think Baylor's going to do them. So that will be nice to go to their campus to do some workshops. Okay, so we have a few more questions in the chat. I'm not looking in the chat right now. Um, some of the other questions were, um, where do we update our phone information? That is in Tapster, Tapster.com. Uh, when you log into Tapster, you will have um, just click on the faculty and staff link and then select your name and update that information there. If you do not have Tapster access, you can ask your fine arts director or athletic director to set you up, or you can contact the TAPS office. Um, so we have um, someone asked, uh, can we get an email when fine arts makes a calendar change? Uh, we did make a couple of changes today just uh, based on uh, the timing that the judges will need. Um, I think the only one we pushed back, we gave you two extra days to turn your entries in. It was March 20th. We moved it to March 22nd. And then senior portfolios, we actually do have to move them up because two weeks is not enough time for the uh, judges to judge them and to let you know ahead of time of who is not going to advance so that you can re-place those artwork. So artwork for seniors that 
um, the senior portfolios that place, um, that cannot be cross-entered into another event. However, the senior portfolios do not make it past the preliminary judging uh, will be released. So that date for uh, turning in is February 15th. I'm sorry, February 22nd. Um, and then when those are graded, we will uh, release the ones that did not make it to state prior to our deadline um, for the other entries so that you can cross, um, you can enter them in a different category if necessary. Um, so another question is, uh, where is our history test? Um, the current one posted on the website is last year's history test. Um, your students can use that as a studying tool. Uh, we are possibly going to list the, uh, the history test on that same in, on that same web page, or it could possibly be in Tapster. We haven't worked out the details um, because the photos are involved. It sometimes affects um, the format of the test. And so it will, there will be a, either a link on the taps.biz art page, or we may just do it straight through Tapster like we do some of our other testing. Um, we will send out an email when that's ready with instructions, as well as post that on the website so that you're well informed uh, prior to the test. Uh, we have another question here. Um, it says, I have a student who creates half human, half monster characters, do they need to be closed? Um, but they can send an image to... They uh, do to need to be closed, but if you would like to send an image to the art committee, they can look at it and then um, verify its legalities. Another question is, are we going to be able to purchase or have access to photos of winning artwork this year? And that answer is yes. We will try to get a link posted on the website, but it, but it is quite a big file of photos. And so if you would like that, you can just send us a request and we'll probably just email it to you. Um, so um, as far as the clothing, uh, it comes down to, I mean, our nudity, we have nudity rules, yes. correct? below the neck or the armpit, uh -huh. armpits three to kneecaps. Mm -hmm. um, so from armpits to kneecaps, uh, three inches above the knee, uh, those parts definitely need to be um, non-nude. And so it's good to send us pictures. Right, and like Holly said, you can send pictures. Um, there's another question that says, what day will the state-only events be held? And that uh, we don't know at this time. Um, we will try to get the calendar worked out this week. I'm still waiting to know about some of the spaces in the convention center, and as soon as we have that figured out, then we'll be able to release the schedule. Okay, I'm just double checking to see if we have any other questions we need to answer. Uh, someone had asked about the artwork information form. I will get that posted uh, as soon as we are done here. It will be um, immediately available as soon as it will take me just a minute to do that. And then someone asked about um, when we will get the state schedule so we can figure out what times we need to be there as far as on-site and uh, viewing times, and we will we will have that schedule hopefully posted by the end of the week.
Okay, um, if there's no other questions, um, no, we need not also share the question. Okay, there's another question about the the student workshops and what day they'll be on. That's another schedule question. Um, like I said, we once we know what all we are trying to offer and what we're trying to squeeze into the days, then we will have that out as soon as possible. There will be workshops for students. Yes. Um, I don't know. Yes. Any other things you want to add? Okay, I'm going to uh, type in some email addresses for you to. No, why is this is not. Just there, but not right here. No, no. Can you see this? Can you see this? Holly, what's your email address? Paul, take you to Yeah, E N D R I S at A O L dot com. Brenda. A and Y dot R E A B is in Victor I S at great fine thing dot com. That'll go on the website. What's going on these these very funny. <laughs> you wife, mama, you take Dave Hendrix now? A AOL did that 17 years ago. I got stuck with it, man. They kept saying, this isn't taken. Okay, if you don't have any more questions for now, we will close up. Um, if you have questions later, you can email Holly, Lori, Amy, or go through our contact page. Let us know if you need anything. We'd be happy to help. Look forward to seeing you guys in April. And thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Everybody wait for Princess Lake. Yeah, I'm going to have to the time of my life. i got a Google account to make things fun. Oh,